So the team building we have had here, is, it's two days at Lishiba where we have gotten to know each other. And so being here for two days and doing academic work or preparation, but also doing fun stuff um, is really important because then the student, the Sumbandila kids, see us as one group of teachers. Uh, today's been pretty fantastic. We uh, arrived at La Sheba in uh, four-wheel drive by Range Rovers and uh, sitting safari style. And as we came up this beautiful uh, mountain road in four-wheel drive and I descended in a valley, then I came across like a herd of giraffe. And so it was just wonderful. They were curious about us, we were curious about them, and uh, it's already an amazing start to the experience. I'm really excited to work with the kids who seem to be equally as eager as I am. This year, um, we've had the wonderful opportunity of bringing together two schools from different parts of the United States, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and um, you know, we do things differently in different parts of the world and different parts of the country. And so it's been exciting learning from each other and coming together in a partnership, two different schools with Zumbandila. Uh, I, I think it's so conducive to having great conversations. It's just so worth it to have all of that energy and all of that um, learning happening from each other and knowing that the kids are going to have so much more because we're coming from two different places. Sumbandila is a nonprofit organization in South Africa. I started working with Sumbandila after hearing the stories about the kids. And so it didn't take much convincing for me to see that I needed to take the great education that I'd received to share with these young people. They are providing uh, support to students who otherwise would not uh, probably make it in the system. People need to support Sumbandila to recognize human potential and to honor that potential by supporting these kids. I met Lee Bristow just a little over four years ago and she told me about what she was doing in South Africa and it spoke to me. In the first week of July, it's always a very special time because we come to Ridgeway College for seven days and the students all stay over. So they're transported to Ridgeway College, they stay here for seven days and for the last three years, we've had a partnership with Riverdale Country School in New York, and more recently with Lakeside from Seattle, where American volunteers come over and teach on our holiday school. And what is amazing is they bring different teaching techniques, and they bring subjects that our children would not normally be exposed to. In June, July, we have the big holiday school, which is what we're doing now, and that's a week-long program, and for now it's with 160 students. The Sumbandila Scholarship Trust has been going for 10 years and we select children from deep rural Vembe who come from household incomes on average under 4,000 rand a month. We have 130 children on our outlier program. Those are the students who come from deep rural schools but they travel here on Saturdays and for the holidays. And then we have 30 full residential scholars that attend Ridgeway College. We have 104 students in the top universities in South Africa and we already have 30 graduates who are in the workplace. When you interview these children, these students, you get that sense of hunger for education. So we're trying to do the best we can to get them into the world like that. And so these young people, um, 
they have a lot of challenges that they face in their day-to-day -day lives. Poverty, of course, is a challenge. Um, the connections to their parents can be a bit of a challenge from time to time. And so, um, in terms of economics and then socially and emotionally, they're facing a lot of challenges that other children across this country may not be facing. We did not have computers. The, like the were chairs, but most of the chairs were broken, and we had to share desks. Like the desk would be small, and there would be three or four people sitting on a desk, and sometimes we'd share chairs. Like two people would sit on one chair. If they are able to be passionate about something and true to that passion and to explore the curiosity and to keep learning, that passion can actually take them to a really interesting future. Um, and so just to understand that their world is really unlimited um, if they have education to help them explore that passion. This is my second time here and I love and look forward to coming back here. Their desire to understand, their, their willingness to engage and, um, and be, be present is just really nourishing to me. And, um, and I know a lot of them come with the heavy burden of making it for their family. And, um, and they just come with this tenacity and like it really nourishes me. Um, my normal school, there's like a lot of people in a class thing and then here we're less than 20. So you get the teacher's full attention and everything and they actually ask you, do you understand? And they won't move forward until you actually tell them that you understand. I don't think there's any words that could actually like describe how grateful I am. Like there's no words in any language, but then I could actually say thank you. I think a lot of the students have only seen math one way and it teaches them to go in just one direction when they are doing their project. So um, when I introduced this project and some of the activities we've been doing, like the, the game that we played, it requires them to think backwards. So as before, like they could multiply three numbers to get 400, but if you ask them what three numbers multiplied together will give you 400, any three numbers, they can't answer. So doing math here in this situation, it gives them the opportunity to think of math in a different way and use it um, in, a, in ways that are more applicable to the real world instead of just rote memorization and things they see all the time. History is important to everybody, however, because we have limited amount of time to teach here, um, I focus on mostly study skills. I truly believe that teaching is something that comes from your heart, and I, when I'm here with the kids, I feel fulfilled. I learn a lot from the kids, even though I'm here to be teaching, um, I feel like I get to learn more than what I teach. Some of them are having a shower indoors down the hall when they don't have that at home and they have a full plate of food and they're able to eat till they even get sick to their stomach for the first time in their lives. So while we think we're just teaching them a photography class or something about science or history, all day to them from the time they wake up and have a hot shower to the time they go to bed with a full stomach, everything is new. This week we are working on what I call writing from the heart. So it's all about folding in hopes and dreams and fears and wishes and desires into the writing along with such specific details that someone who reads it is able to experience the world that you're creating through the words that you're using. These kids that I'm teaching don't have as many opportunities as the kids I work with in the United States. Although they don't have as many opportunities, they have heart and soul. Through writing, you're able to understand yourself a little bit better and understand the world a little bit better. So I'm teaching English and we're focusing on writing and what I told them is that no matter what profession they go into, whether they're an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer, the ability to write well is going to serve them well and make them more successful. The kids here are almost universally super motivated because they know that education is part of what's going to help them succeed in the future, so they don't take it for granted, uh, and they do so much with so little resources. 
What's amazing is that they're exposed to an entirely different style of teaching and many of them take this back into their communities, into their villages, they tutor their families, they tutor their peers and they bring it into their schools and their villages. You don't actually ever expect not to have thoughts because that's just not the nature of the mind. I'm teaching them a lot of things actually. Um, yoga is a really great tool for life and it's really all about uh, using the body and the breath to still the mind and to connect with the soul. It's discipline, that's one thing, and it also just is such a good thing for you physically, emotionally and mentally, and I think that's something we all need in life. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to teach basketball, um, especially in a place where I heard that soccer is very popular. I want kids to learn about the sport of basketball and also just have fun playing it. It's a very active sport whereby we learn different styles as how to we can defend ourselves. Um, so it teaches more than just the sport of basketball, it teaches skills that they need in life. The American teachers bring such enthusiasm and joy to the classroom and are they, they are so enjoying our children, but our children are enormously appreciative of all the learning that's happening. I want to um, give them an opportunity to be uh, creative uh, and also give them hopefully a very powerful tool. I'd say about maybe half have taken pictures with a smartphone and I'd say most of them are actually really just selfies. Uh, and they haven't thought much beyond that. Now what I'm finding is that the students are taking to it. They're, they're so bright, they're so enthusiastic and they're learning very fast. I'm teaching a visual arts class we're actually working with abstraction, um, the attempt to convey feeling or emotion without usually using words or obvious imagery. I think I would just like everyone here to see the benefits of creating art, the healing benefits of it, the ability to self-express through it, and, and to also value art as a voice. We're doing abstract arts in Benham during, like she said, they must draw anything that we want to show our emotions and feelings. It's my first time doing art, so I'm finding it good. Yeah, it's fun. I see this as a gift, like I've been given a chance and I must use it wisely. So it's very good to be here, experiencing new things, meeting new people and studying. So, yeah. I wanted to do a collaborative sculpture and I've decided we'll do a collaborative sculpture with all the classes that will be a huge prop that they'll use in the performance. And I also wanted to experience printmaking, and so we're going to do printmaking on fabric that we'll use as like a backdrop for the whole performance. The art students are part of that wonderful Friday event. Are going to have a, really an art opening, an art show, and the whole community, students and faculty, will all be coming to see their artwork. And we're trying to make a look at a gallery uh, where every student has a picture printed, and there will be also a projected large with a digital projector and the names will be on it. And I think they're quite excited about it. It's a wonderful goal to, to accomplish this. Right now we're uh, programming effects for our final project, which is uh, sort of a big uh, spectacular about the heart. We're doing pretty much the special effects. So we've got, we set up sensors to drums, uh, connected to microcontrollers, which are sort of tiny little cheap board computers. Um, that will trigger sounds, trigger LED light strips, pulses, strobe lights. It's kind of intertwined with the effects of the, uh, with the dances. We're going to wire it up with strobe lights and uh, strips. That's what they're doing now. They've just made a pulsing LED strip that, so the heart looks like it's beating. It's going to be wrapped around the heart. What I really am ho hoping for is that they'll realize that if, they're, if this sort of thing interests them, they can learn it on their own. Other kids are doing IT and they're creating with sensors, the heartbeats, so they're getting excited. So we're adding that into the dance. These kids are ready to move all the time, so it's, it's really easy. It's great to be in Africa because they feel the rhythm. We don't have to count, they go, they feel it, they have it inside. So I'm learning a lot from them. Actually, it's, it's a gift for me to come here. I feel so inspired by them. I got my ticket for the long way round. 
They haven't had any musical experience in their life. It has been quite a challenge to teach them something from the ground up when a lot of them haven't even done music in their whole entire life. So they're going to sing two different songs and then they're going to have a mass choir with every single form there. And then that's when we're going to sing the final song. The kids need to know they have faith beyond just getting the funding for one year. They've got to make it all the way up to university. The smallest gesture that you give is so appreciated and so needed and goes so far that it's an easy, easy thing to have the desire to give. It's very obvious where you want to help. I'd like to thank you all for everything you did for me, for everything you, you're doing for us all. Because like if it was not for your for your hand in this institution and for your hand in this program, we would not be what we are today. 